Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on this Polaris Ranger 900. The first thing you're going to want to do, if you have a factory equipped bumper, you're going to want to go ahead and remove it. We've already done so. So we're going to grab our winch mount as well as our winch and we're going to attach the winch to the winch mount and then get it installed to the machine. So we're going to take our winch and our winch mount. We're going to flip our winch upside down just like this. And we're going to grab the bolts provided in the hardware kit. You'll have a washer as well as a lock washer. And we're running a 5,000 pound winch today. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go and we're going to use the outer holes. If you're running a 3,500 pound winch, you'll use the innermost holes. And if you're using a 4,500, you'll use the outermost holes as well. So we'll just go through, get all our hardware started here. And then once we have it all started, we'll go ahead and we'll fully tighten it. Now that we have our winch attached to our winch mount, we're going to get in our hardware kit and we're going to grab four M10 by 20 millimeter bolts and then two nylock M10 nuts. The top two bolts are going to go right here and here. Then the bottom two are going to go down here. And the bottom two will have a nut on the back side. Grab our winch mount and winch. I like to just kind of pop one bolt through, lift the winch into place. Get one side started about as far as you can get it. And we'll go over here to the opposite side. Get our bolt started as well. And we'll come down here to the, our bottom holes. We'll stick our bolt through and we'll take our nylock nut. And we'll reach around to the back side, get it started on there. Just gonna make sure that we got a good amount of thread started up here on our top bolts. I'll pick up on the winch a little bit, take the tension off the bolt, make sure it's good and started. And we're gonna go ahead and fully tighten our hardware here. So once we have our winch mount fully tightened, we're gonna throw our winch in free spool mode. Go ahead and pull out our winch rope just a little bit here. Just let it hang for the time being. And we're gonna go ahead and remove our hood from the machine. And as you can see on our machine, it's equipped with a factory winch mounting location. And these holes, they're gonna be a little bit off of exactly where they need to be. So what we did is we just drilled them out a little bit. That way when we sit our control box down, it lines up with the two outermost holes and our control box sits straight like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in our winch hardware kit. It's gonna come with the winch and we're gonna find the two long Allen headed screws. And we're gonna take one of them, pop it through the front, slide it into this front hole and we're gonna go back to the back side, do the same exact thing. Then we're gonna grab two of our small flat washers, lock washers, and then nuts. And we're gonna come from the bottom side. And we're gonna go ahead and get our hardware installed and we're gonna go ahead and tighten down the box to the machine. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and fully tighten our hardware. So the next thing that we're gonna do is, is we're gonna connect our wires from our winch control box to our power source, which in this case is gonna be our bus bar. If your bus bar is not wired up, you'll have to run your battery hot and ground to the battery directly, but our bus bar is wired up. So we're just gonna run them straight from the box to the bus bar. Whenever you open up the kit, you're gonna get a big long spool of wire. And you know, we're going from here to there, so we don't need that much. We went ahead and cut them down. In our kit, we provide extra connectors, heat shrink, that way you can crimp your new connection on, heat shrink it up, and you're good to go. Our red wire here is gonna go to the battery positive, or the red post, on the control box. So we're just gonna remove our nut, move our washer, and lock washer. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the farthest left. So the one that's farthest away is gonna be your all-time hot, or your battery positive connection. We'll go ahead and we'll remove that nut off the bus bar there. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wire, run it just like this, put it onto the control box, making sure we're not touching any other connections. And then we'll put our washer on as well as our lock washer. And then we'll go ahead and get our nut started back on there. And I like to leave it loose so I'll have both connections made. That way, if we need to adjust our wire, move it around a little bit, we can do so without having to loosen the connection back. So we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna connect it to the all-time hot or the farthest post towards the outside of the machine. We'll stick our wire on there and we'll take our nut. Go ahead and thread it back on there. Get it down on there by hand, about as tight as you can get it. And come up here and do the same thing, just tighten it up by hand. Then we'll go ahead and we'll remove the center nut, which is gonna be our ground. Go ahead and set it aside. And we've already made a ground cable as well, so we're just gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna remove our nut off of our control box, as well as the lock washer and washer. We'll set all this aside for just a second until we make our connection. So we're just gonna slide it just like this down through here. Slide it onto the control box. Just like that. We'll go right here to our center post. Make our connection. We'll go ahead and we'll take our nut and put it back on over here. And we'll reinstall our lock washer and washer on the control box. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll fully tighten the nut on the control box as well as on the bus bar. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our blue and yellow wires out of the kit. These are gonna attach from the winch control box to the winch itself. The awesome thing about our Super ATV Black Ops winches is that everything's labeled out for you. you. Don't, There's no guesswork. You don't have to guess, does this wire go here? So we're gonna look on here. We got the winch yellow. Obviously, we got a yellow wire, and we're gonna come down here onto the winch, and on the back side right here, it's gonna have a little spacer that's yellow, so we know all we gotta do is run our yellow to yellow and we made our connection properly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our winch wire stretched out here, and we're gonna start feeding this wire down through here in between the shroud and the radiator. I just pulled that center piece out of the bumper or out of the front fascia there just to make it a little bit easier to run the wire. And I'm going to run it right out this side right here. So then it literally brings us right into the position where we're going to make our connection. So you're going to have two washers. You're going to leave one and take one off. Then slide your wire onto the winch, reinstall your washer as well as your nut. And again, I like to leave everything loose until we have both connections made just in case we need to rotate this wire or whatever we end up needing to do. So then I'm just gonna run my wires down. We're gonna get it to where we don't have a ton of slack. So I'm gonna kinda pull my wire up here where it's gonna make its connection. Right about there is where we need to cut it off at. You know, if you're not the most confident person when it comes to wiring or you want to tie it up out of the way or you want to run your wires differently, you absolutely can. But for this specific installation, I'm going to go ahead and cut my wires down. We'll grab the blue wire and we'll do the same exact thing. We're going to run it right along with the yellow. They're going to take the same exact path. Just drop it down through here. Get it down towards the bottom. And you can reach your hand up in here, grab a hold of it. Start feeding it down connection and again I like to have my wires you know looking really nice I don't want any wires all cobbed up anywhere anything like that so we like to pull them tight so we can get them up through here I cut this wire off right here and we're gonna go ahead and we'll grab our connectors and for our ground, just so we know it's a ground, even though it's labeled out, we'll go ahead and cut a piece of black heat shrink for it. And for the positive, we'll cut a piece of red. That way we know what we're working with here. And we'll just come right here, 
paper crimps. Go ahead and strip the outer coating. And yellow's hot wire, so we're gonna go ahead and put the red heat shrink on it. And this is all personal preference here. You can obviously use whatever kind of heat shrink you want. Then you just wanna get right in the center of the connector there. Make sure you make a good connection. Pull on it, you know, try to pull it apart. If it doesn't pull apart, it's good to go. We're gonna take our blue wire. We'll go ahead and strip it down as well. Take our heat shrink, slide it over. Take our connector, twist it on there. Take our crimps. Get right in the middle of the connector. Make sure we get it good and crimp down, pull on the connector, twist it, make sure it doesn't come loose. So then we're gonna grab our heat gun and we're gonna go ahead and heat shrink. Our heat shrink's on. So once we've done that, we'll go ahead and we'll make our connections here. Put it on the blue post on the control box. So we'll remove our nut. Close our lock washer and washer. We'll slide this onto the blue post. And we'll do the same thing with the yellow. Just bring it right around here. Then we're gonna come back down to our winch. We're gonna take our insulators here, slide them on. We'll go ahead and we'll fully tighten our hardware here. We'll pull our covers back over the connection. Just wiggle it over just like that. We'll do the same thing on the back side back here. Slide it on. Make sure you have a washer first in your connector. Then a washer and nut. Then we'll go ahead and tighten our connections down on our control box here. Make sure they're nice and tight. Go through, double check them all while you're in here. At this point, you're gonna wanna grab the wiring out of the kit. You're gonna see it has a connector here that's gonna connect on to the control box. And you're also gonna have a red wire. This red wire is gonna be your keyed on power source. And then we're gonna have our hardwired winch controller. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and pop the top portion of the dash apart on the machine, feed our wire through the grommet in the firewall, make our connection, and then install our hardwired remote to the inside of the machine. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna remove all of the push pins holding the top portion of the dash in. Popped out real quick. Then this dash will just kind of roll forward. And we have full cab enclosure doors installed on this machine, so it makes it a little bit harder to get the top portion of the dash out. Just gonna kind of wiggle it around a little bit more on this machine in particular. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the center section of the dash where your display is. It'll be two T25s in the bottom. Go ahead and remove those. And the center section will just kind of roll out. What we did here, we made it so we can install our hardwired rocker switch right into the cubby hole. All you have to do to do that is just pop two holes right here, right here on the back side. So what you'll have to do is you'll just have to lay your hardwired winch controller up onto the bottom of the cubby hole and you'll just have to mark your holes and then drill them. 
and that's what we did and then you just nut it on the back side and you're good to go so we've already done this so what we're going to do is we're going to start running our wires so what we're going to do is since we've got our hole drilled for our two studs and our hardwired switch and then we also pop the hole in so we can feed our wires up through here just like this we'll just go ahead and we'll pull a lot of the slack through once we got the majority of the slack through, what we're gonna do is we're gonna locate the grommet. So if you look right here, we have a cab heater installed on ours, so we can't completely remove the top portion of the dash without disconnecting it all, so we're gonna go ahead and leave it. You see all these wires moving right down in here? That's what we're gonna feed our wire through. So we're just gonna follow through the top of our cubby here. Just pull all our wiring back into the back portion of the dash. Get it all pulled through there. And we're just gonna take this connection right here, pop it straight through. What to do is I like to keep all my slack back in behind the dash. I don't wanna see all my slack out here, so I go ahead and I come out here and I make my connection. We'll make the connection right here. And then because this winch kit is universal, you can install this on a Ranger, a Razor, a Can-Am, it doesn't matter. We give you the option to wire up your keyed on power however you'd like. You know, if you're running a 2019 Ranger and you have a pulse bar you made, wire it in differently. If you're running a Razor, a Can-Am, etc. So on this one, we have a bus bar. So what we're gonna need to do is crimp a small connector on here. But before we connect anything, I'm gonna pull all my slack back into the dash, get it up here like this, so it's nice and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my wire off right about here, just cause I don't want a bunch of extra wire, like I said. I'm just gonna grab our wire strippers, strip it down, twist it up nice there. And then I, I went and got a couple connectors, heat shrink connectors here, made sure that the eye on them was small enough that it's gonna fit on our bus bar. I'm just gonna run my wire right up there. Grab my crimps. Go ahead and crimp it down. Make sure we made a good connection. We did, we're golden. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here or the far right post on the bus bar this time. Go ahead and remove my nut. We're just gonna take this wire that we just connected. Just gonna sit it right on the post. Run our nut down. So we got it ran down. We're just gonna grab our socket, your wrench, whatever you're using here. Let's tighten it. And then while you're in here tightening this one, go ahead and check your other two connections as well. You remember what I was saying about the slack? We're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of our slack up to where we can get our hardwired controller slid into place. So this hardware is gonna be the hardware that will come off of the, of the hardwired switch. So you're just gonna make sure that you put a washer down on the stud first. We'll do that on both sides. Once we have those started, let's we'll grab a wrench, a socket, whatever. Just go ahead and just tighten it up. Now remember these threads are super tiny so you don't need to tighten them up that much. You just tighten it up until you're tight there. And that's gonna be good enough. Like right there, we're tight, it's not going anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the rest of our slack to the center portion of the dash here. you run it underneath everything you don't want it stacked on top like we have heater hoses here we're just going to take our wiring just kind of bundle it up together just like this I'll take a zip tie you don't want to tighten it down too tight but just tight enough to keep it all bunched together 
And then on the Ranger, you have a pretty good place to where wiring is going to sit. It's not going to move around or anything like that. So then we're just going to go ahead and reinstall the center portion of our dash and then reinstall our dash. So the next thing that we're going to do is install our fair lead to our factory bumper. Now if you're using a Super ATV front brush guard, you're going to use the plate that's provided in the kit, but we're using a factory bumper today. So we're going to install our fair lead directly to the bumper. Now whenever we're doing this, and whenever you're doing this, you're probably going to have the factory center piece of the grill. Ours doesn't have it. We've had this machine apart a bunch of different times. So what we're going to do is install our fair lead directly to the front bumper just like this. We're going to grab our Allen headed hardware that's provided in the kit as well as our lock washers and nuts. So you want to make sure the side that has the cutout in it goes towards the front of the machine. So we'll drop our Allen headed hardware in. We'll slide it through the holes here, get it lined up. And we'll come on the back side and we'll put a lock washer as well as a nut. Then we're just going to grab an Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and tighten it up. Doesn't have to be super tight. It's tight enough to get that lock washer down. Then we're going to grab the bumper and go ahead and reinstall it. And as we're doing it, we want to grab a hold of our winch rope that we pulled out earlier and slide it right through the fair lead. And we're going to go ahead. Get our bumper realigned. Want to get our holes lined up. And we're going to grab our factory bolts as well as spacers. Don't forget to put your spacer in between the mounting hole here. So we go just like that. And reach it back in behind there. Put your nut on. Then we'll come up from the bottom, start our bottom bolts, get our nut started there as well. And we'll do the same exact thing over here for this opposite side. Spacer. And our bolt. Come up from the bottom, put your bolt in, and your nut. And you'll just want to go through and fully tighten your bumper hardware. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our clevis hook. We're just going to go ahead and remove the cotter pin. Line it up. We'll reinstall our pin here. Take the cotter pin. Get it pushed back in there. And we'll take our pull strap and just slide it right over the hook. Just like that. And we're going to take our stop block and you want to make sure the side that is cut out is going towards the front of the machine. And you'll get in your hardware kit here and you'll have a bunch of allen headed screws. You'll slide your screws through, line them up on the opposite side. And you'll put a washer and a nut and then you'll just go through and fully tighten all the hardware. Now you're just going to want to reinstall your hood. So in the kit, it's going to come with a wireless remote, but we send the wireless remote with no batteries in it. That way there's no chance of you getting it dead. And we're going to get into our kit here. It's going to come with two batteries. So whenever you go to put your batteries in, you want to make sure that the positive side is facing down. And we'll just take the other portion, make sure it lights up. And there you have it. That's how super quick and easy it is. Install Super ATV's winch and winch mount on this Polaris Ranger 900. For more information on our winch or winch mount, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.